believe it was in that stewed salmon recipe, part of the series we've been doing for Lent, Lenten season fish Friday. I promised to show you all a version with no bones in there, fish with no bones. After all, we cook for children and you know, some adults, they're not even capable of dealing with the bones either. So what I have here, some beautiful pieces of cod, no bones, bones were removed. It was a fillet, well, a couple fillets, two pounds. The principal recipe will be available at CaribbeanPod.com within the next 48 hours. So don't stress too much. If you want printable stuff, you can head over there. But anyways, two pounds of that codfish. And it's been cleaned with, uh, well, I washed it with the juice of a lemon and cool water. And I drained it. We're going to season it. And the seasoning is pretty simple. Sea salt. And you can use any salt you like using. Black pepper. I have here some Caribbean green seasoning. And Caribbean green seasoning, if you're new to Caribbean cooking, is simply a blend or a puree of all the herbs we like using in our dishes. Um, in mine, for example, I added extra garlic in there, seasoning peppers, which we call pimento peppers. So it's all kind of niceness in there. And some curry powder. I'm gonna hit that's a little shaky shake of some good madras, well, Caribbean style madras curry powder. Does that even make sense? What well, was made in the Caribbean? Blend it according to a madras blend. I'm gonna give that a good mix, but what I also want to share with you all is we'll also need some grated ginger, some tomato paste, smoked paprika. I've got a couple cups of coconut milk over here. From a can, I'm unable with the whole making fresh coconut milk at this point. Anyhow, over here, a puree, and that puree has tomato, onion, garlic. Yeah? So again, tomato, onion, garlic, and I added maybe a quarter cup of water just to help my blender pull it all together. And a, a somewhat smooth puree. Basically all we need to do is give that a good stir just to sort of coat the pieces of fish with that curry powder. And you know, you can use your favorite curry powder. I said I'm a dress blend, but you can use whatever you have on hand because whatever you have on hand, I guess you still have it because you like it. If you make your own blend, by all means, rock that own blend. Now what we're gonna do is just set this aside while we prepare the sort of sauce that we're gonna and you know all we're doing is and one of the elements two elements I wanted to share with you all to really hit home with this recipe is one in the stewed salmon we fried the salmon we flour dusted it and fried it first we're gonna eliminate that whole frying dusting and flour thing and of course nice big chunks the second element is nice big chunks of fish with no bones but again as you wash it, make sure you pass your fingers on, especially where the, if you know fish, where that sort of backbone of vertebra is, because sometimes there may still be bones, yeah? I've got my saucepan on a medium flame to that, and you need something with a bit of high sides. We're gonna add a tablespoon of olive oil, and we really don't need the oil to get hot at this point, because the oil will come into play later on. If we add the tomato, sauce to here it may want to jump back at you and we really don't want to endanger you or myself as in this case here so in goes that tomato sauce and you notice the pot wasn't screaming hot or anything but we want to bring it up to a boil now and what's going to happen is we're going to cook this down i'm going to hit that a bit of black pepper we're going to cook this down until it's going to get deep in color plus it's gonna get really tight. When I say tight, it's gonna get more, it's gonna start clumping together. Again, more of that salt, because we need to, sometimes the tomato may be a bit tart. If you wanted to add a teaspoon of brown sugar in here, you can do that as well. But all we want to do now is bring that up to a boil and then re allow it to go on a rolling boil to sort of burn off all the liquid in there. It was so quickly, we started getting bubbles coming up there. Just move this into the sink. Just gonna stir that in, because I want the salt and that black pepper to do its magic in there. And all we want to do, and this is why I said something with high sides, because it's gonna splatter all over your stove. I'm only trying to encourage that, because I know I hate cleaning my stove. Anyhow, let that go here. 
What I also like doing is going with a bit of tomato concentrate just to heighten the tomato flavor. So a tablespoon and a half of that tomato paste. I've got a steady bubble now. So this is when I'm gonna go in with that smoked paprika. I sprinkle that all over and that's gonna give it a nice smoky earthy flavor. And of course, that grated ginger. It's been about 11 minutes and you can see how it's really thickening up now and this is where that olive oil that we started with is going to come into play it's going to start frying the tomato and the onion and garlic remember we went in with ginger and that smoked paprika um that is there that's going to heighten the flavor with that sort of frying action that's going to be happening now so maybe about four or five more minutes and then we can go in with the coconut milk to finish off making the sauce it's to the sort of texture that I'm looking for. I'm trying not to burn it at this point now. So one more final stir. And the kitchen should have that lovely aroma. You know, this reminds me of summertime. We're using fresh tomato from the garden. And uh, fresh herbs from the garden, boy. I'm telling you, boy. Nice things, yeah? In goes that coconut milk. Of course, we want to be very careful, very gentle. And we're going to stir this just to bring in or combine all of those ingredients together but be very gentle because i ain't trying to get burned plus I, I, again i'm going to repeat myself familiar i am not trying to dirty my stove which more than likely i've already done but the whole idea now is to bring this up to a boil let it boil for about three minutes three to four minutes to cook out the rawness of the the coconut because if you don't cook out that rawness of that coconut ladies and gentlemen if you've ever had coconut milk in anything and you find that your stomach gives you problems you visit the toilet ah kind of often after it is because they didn't cook out that sort of rawness from the coconut milk yeah it needs to be done and speaking about rawness I remember my dad has a term um, <laughs> He called it poor guts when you can't eat something and then have problems with the bathroom after. Uh, he said, well, no, my dad, he says you have poor guts, so which means your stomach can't handle much, all right? <laughs> Old school Caribbean men, they have, they have real chat, you know, they have real chat. And I'm proud to say that I learned from the best. I had it on this sort of rolling boil, so at this point, we're going to add the pieces of fish directly in there. And remember... Two things you gotta remember, fish cooks quickly, we don't want to overcook it. And in saying that, try to cut up the pieces of fish the same size, equal size, just so that it cooks uniformly, yeah? I'm just gonna go in, if you wanted to give this a quick rinse with a couple tablespoons of water and add it in here, that is totally up to you. Sup <laughs> soldiers? Listen, if you enjoy this recipe, I'd really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and click that bell notification thing. If you've made the recipe, Take a picture and send it to me, email address down here. I'm mean, trying to tell people the email address, then butts will take the address and do all kind of thing with it. And tag me on Instagram at Caribbean Pod. I really appreciate you guys and thanks for being in my kitchen with me today. Irie, Irie. I'm just gonna give that a mix to dunk all the pieces of fish. And remember that fish is seasoned with that Caribbean green seasoning. So it's, it's adding not only that lovely cod flavor, it's also adding what we seasoned it with, you know. Um, that Caribbean green seasoning is brilliant thing, so don't sleep on that. All we want to do now is give that about four or five minutes, and yo, we're done. After you've tasted it for salt, adjusted the salt. So let's say you give it five minutes. You taste it for salt, the salt is still liking. You're gonna go in with some, I have here some parsley. I was gonna say cilantro. But lately cilantro, what most people call coriander, has, hasn't been agreeing with me. If you want to have some uh, some shadow benny in there, by all means, you turn megonian. You want to rock that? Rock that. And all I would do now is hit that a stir, like so. I notice how the fish is nice and flaky, so I don't want to break it up too much. Um, allow the sauce to just thicken up on its own. And again, taste it for salt, and you're good. I'm gonna show you all quickly what happened there. See nice big chunky flakes of fish there? Just look at that. Let me show you again. And it's time to go very soup-like, so I'm trying not to break it up too much, but you understand what I'm talking about. A nice little basmati, a little coconut rice, a little, yo, steam white rice, boiled green banana, yam. 
Yo, what's up, Dashin? I love it with Dashin. What go say? 